Things that have been discredited during the destruction of Gaza. Here's a list of things that have been discredited during the destruction of Gaza. Israel, the rules-based international order, liberals, the label anti-Semitism, the mainstream media, Joe Biden, the two-state solution myth, Bernie Sanders, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the label terrorist, the human shields lie, the ADL, APAC, the U.S. war machine, right-wing free speech supporters, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, Zionism, all Western governments, all of Western civilization, everything Westerners believe about their society. The U.S. vetoed multiple U.N. ceasefire resolutions, then put forward a fake ceasefire resolution that didn't actually demand a ceasefire, and accused Russia and China of sabotaging peace when they vetoed it. Then an actual ceasefire resolution was passed, which the U.S. abstained from voting on rather than vetoing in order to save face over its Russia-China moralizing. And then the U.S. declared, 100% falsely, that the U.N. ceasefire resolution which passed is non-binding. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez continues to support and defend Biden and just endorsed virulent Israel supporter Hakeem Jeffries for House Speaker even after accusing Israel of genocide in a House floor speech. If you say this is a genocide and then you support the people who are backing this genocide, it means either A, you're fine with genocide, or B, you only called it genocide to score progressive political points and don't actually believe what you said. There's a tweet by Tamim. Israel assaulted Al-Shifa Hospital again last week, and the world did nothing, so it's assaulting another two hospitals now, Al-Amal and Nasser. It's a Daily Star headline, Israel besieges two more Gaza hospitals. Comment from Caitlin. Israel's obsession with destroying hospitals makes no sense from a military strategic viewpoint, but it makes tons of sense from a genocidal viewpoint. Biden supporters keep trying to spin his genocidal actions as some kind of aberration in his otherwise lovely behavior due to highly unusual circumstances, as though he hasn't been a bloodthirsty warmonger and an extreme pro-Israel hawk his entire fucking political career. Don't babble at me about how bad and wrong it is for Palestinians to use violence unless you can offer me a coherent plan for what they should do instead. Civil disobedience won't work because Zionists have no conscience and don't care about Palestinian death and suffering. The doors to a two-state solution with a real Palestinian state are slammed shut by Israel's political landscape and are being further bolted down by continually expanding settlements deliberately designed to prevent such a solution from even happening. A one-state solution where everyone has equal rights and no ethnicity gets preferential treatment is an even more remote pipe dream which not even Israel's Western allies support. So what can the Palestinians do? It doesn't look like anyone who opposes armed resistance has any good answers. Really, what they want is for Palestinians to just lie down and submit to whatever abuses Israel wants to inflict upon them and just slowly fade away into obscurity and become a forgotten people. But they can't say that aloud without sounding like psychopaths, so they just finger-wag at Hamas without ever offering any legitimate solutions. Palestinians have been forced against their will into an impossibly horrible situation and they sometimes use violence out of desperation because all other doors are closed to them. If you want me to condemn them for this, you can kiss my ass, especially since you can't even tell me what they should do instead. The overwhelming majority of Westerners spend roughly 0% of their day thinking about Jews and Judaism, but because Israel stands accused of genocide, people are being gaslighted into believing our society is overflowing with a widespread seething hatred of Jewish people. All popular online posts about Israeli atrocities will have numerous comments underneath claiming that it didn't happen, or that it was justified, or that it was good actually, or that it should be blamed on Hamas. Every single one, without a single solitary exception. No matter how strong the evidence is, no matter how horrific the atrocity. This shows you that Israel apologists don't care about truth or morality, and it shows you that they never have. All throughout Israel's history, they've been lying and manipulating the public narrative about what the Israeli state has been doing this entire time. That's why they push so hard to get people deplatformed and censored, and to get TikTok shut down. All they care about is controlling the public narrative, 
so they want to silence anyone who makes that harder for them.